tell you a story. Like myself, one of my clients loves to go on cruises. They love those seven-day cruises out of New York and New Jersey to uh, see the Bermuda or the Bahamas. And, and, and this particular client, they go about three times a year. And so not surprisingly, when we come into audit, uh, we found 21 out of the 24 deposits they made were each on the same day as payroll. But the three deposits were exactly seven days late. Uh, so I, I guess they just charge too much for that internet service on those on those cruises. Uh, is that a reasonable excuse, Bill? Is that is there any excuse for late deposits? Well, the Department of Labor really focuses on this issue, you know, and and this is really primarily a U.S. Department of Labor issue, uh, and you know, the expectation under ERISA. Uh, which is the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974, and the related department regulations, is that you know, plan sponsors must deposit an amount with health and participant accounts on a very prompt basis. Now, for a small plan, uh, which is a, a plan with uh, less than 100 participants generally, uh, the department has issued uh, a safe harbor guideline that says a small plan has seven business days to get that money deposited into the uh, the plan. And, and that's really a fairly uh, generous timeline. But once you get over that 100 participant level and you become you know, defined as a large plan, uh, they expect much, much quicker compliance. And uh, really, uh, anything more than three business days uh, is, is really, you'd have a hard time proving to the Department of Labor that, uh, that you couldn't have done it any sooner. And the other, the other aspect of it, and this relates to your, your question, Eric, is that if you demonstrate that you can do it same day as payroll or, you know, the day following, well, then they, um, uh, they expect you to really uh, follow those, you know, that every single time. You know, that, you know, if you can do it once, why can't you do it 24 times a year or, or 26 or 52, whatever your payroll cycle is? You know, if you can do it once, you have to do it all. Uh, so the correction there is, uh, you know, this is a prohibited transaction, which you have to disclose in your Form 5500, and uh, that you need to uh, deposit lost earnings into the plan uh, in order to correct that. And um, you, you may have to pay an excise tax to the department, I mean, to the IRS, pardon me, uh, for that violation of the prohibited transaction rules. So, uh, right. the uh, the department is very serious about this. I have actually been involved where uh, a plan sponsor uh, was uh, deferring on a three-day basis, or, or not deferring, but depositing on a three-day basis. But they came in and said, based on the uh, size of your company, uh, you really should be doing it one day, and made them compute earnings for the full year on the difference between one day and three days. Now, now that was a pretty hard line uh, investigator, but uh, uh, you know, and the company ultimately, uh, on the advice of their counsel, which I agreed with, uh, went along with it just to get the matter done. But uh, you know, they, they can be very serious about that. <laughs> 